So AH has finally revealed her strategy. And let me just say, it must have been constructed by a rocket surgeon because you know what? This thing, it is an absolute mess. See? During AH's counterclaim for the upcoming Johnny Depp vs. AH 2021 litigation, you can see one specific article referenced repeatedly. Now, this article is interesting because it is the foundation for AH's defense and the reason that she's asking for a hundred million dollars. And what's absolutely hilarious about this, this would not only not win you a counterclaim, but this kind of thing here, it's going to end up losing you a case. So you and I, we're going to talk about this in conjunction with the counterclaim. We're going to talk about the reality of the article and so much more. And yeah, we're going to talk about how this kind of thing right here, it will lose you a case. Good job there, A.H. Good job indeed. So hey there. Now there are two things that I want to clarify with this. Number one, this is not associated with Johnny Depp versus The Sun 2020. This is associated with Johnny Depp versus A.H. It's supposed to happen in 2021, January, if that holds firm. Number two, Two, the reason that this is important is not because Johnny Depp is a star, but rather because Johnny Depp was denied due process and because he can afford to fight this. I mean, currently, one case cost him $1.26 million. How many of us could fight that if that came up? Now, all of this is brought up in the counterclaims by AH, and I did an in-depth video on that if you want to check that out. But counterclaims, that definitely what they sound like. This is a counterclaim by AH asserting the following following about counterclaim defendant Johnny Depp. So basically, if you leave out all of the crazy about bots and other things, again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should check out the video on this. But this is her defense. In December 2018, AH published an op-ed in the Washington Post calling for, quote-unquote, changes to the laws and rules and social norms so that, quote-unquote, women who come forward to talk about, we're going to say DV, receive more support. She warned that such reform is necessary because power Powerful men who have been accused of, again, DV, will spare nothing to punish and harass their accusers. Now, according to her, if you compare that with the motivations for the GQ article, well, let's just check that out. So, more than two years after AH filed for that DVRO, and a month before AH's op-ed, in November 2018, Depp invited a GQ journalist, Jonathan Heath, to interview him to provide, quote-unquote, the truth Johnny Depp will wants you to hear, because according to Mr. Heath, Depp was quote-unquote angry, angry about a lot of things, and he's vengeful. See, what A.H. is alleging is that unlike Depp, she wasn't angry, and that her op-ed, it really didn't mention him at all. It was nothing about their relationship. It made no claims about his conduct. Fundamentally, and contrary to the premise of his uh, defamation claim, the op-ed was not about Depp or his conduct toward A.H. It was about A.H. and what was happening to her after she came forward. Based on her experience, as I was a woman who reported a man for the op-ed described how institutions protect men accused of and how society reacts wrathfully to women who speak out. Now, A.H. alleges basically that there are three counts that cause problems for her. Count two, defamation and defamation per se. It's linked specifically to this GQ article. And because of that GQ article and more, number one, everything that she said in the Washington Post, it should be declared free speech or protected under anti slap laws, quote, declaring that A.H. is immune from civil liability for Depp's claims and complainant and for her statements in her op-ed because A.H.'s op-ed is quote-unquote regarding matters of public concern which would be protected under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution made by A.H. that are communicated to a third party. B. She's declared that she's entitled to attorney fees and costs. C. That she should be awarded compensatory damages of not more than $100 million. Why $100 million? Because that's twice the amount that Mr. Depp asserted against A.H. Literally, they wrote that out. She should also be awarded punitive damage to the max extent permitted by law and no less, note that, no less 
than $350,000. She should also get awarded costs, including attorney fees of the trial of this claim and all appeals as well. That's why that's listed there. She also wants the issuance of a preliminary and permanent injunction against Mr. Depp and his agents as well to cease and desist from taking any action that's in violation with Virginia codes. Also, give more money here and enjoin Mr. Depp permanently from continuing his quote-unquote harassment and relentless pursuit of A.H. Now, what's fascinating about that versus reality is the fact that that article, it was written in response to the Rolling Stone article that you see in front of you, The Trouble with Johnny Depp. Multi-million dollar lawsuits, a haze of booze and hash, a marriage gone very wrong, and a lifestyle he can't afford inside the trials of Johnny Depp. Now, as the title implies, this is not an op-ed. This is not something that you would want your name associated with. This thing is very much a hit piece. And Johnny Depp, he was not thrilled by this thing at all. Now, all of that leads Johnny Depp to want to set the record straight. And you see this in the GQ rebuttal from October 2nd, 2018. Again, the article that she brings up, making every single portion of it about her. Now, you can see in the description, too, this is what this is, a rebuttal. Hollywood divorce, where acrimony meets alimony somewhere on the highest, most exposed precipice. And when those disputes are embittered further by costly lawsuits against once-trusted advisors and accusations of DV, the truth, as presented by either side, will take the fall. We don't know the truth, but following an invitation to spend time with the face of one multi-billion dollar franchise and a whole rogue gallery of tender oddball tales at the French village, he once bought to share with another former partner, we now know his version of it. Aggrieved, aggressive, and vulnerable by turns, it's all these things. He spoke, we listened, and here's the truth that Johnny Depp wants you to hear. C.A.H., she wants this article to be solely about her. And yet it says right here, after all of your intro, it is about the Rolling Stone. Quote, it's about two months after the publication of the widely read Rolling Stone interview entitled The Trouble with Johnny Depp. It's an article that Depp will talk about later, addressing it as he does most topics with a sort of vengeful nonchalance. This is a man I will come to understand who will happily spill his guts all over the table yet remain flippant about cause and effect. This coolness, one suspects, is his armor. The actor refers to the Rolling Stone article as, quote-unquote, a sham. In fact, he goes much further. I was shafted. The guy, he's talking about the journalist who wrote it, walked in with absolutely one intention, and I could see it, and I thought maybe I could help him understand, you know? I trusted. He mentions the co-founder and publisher of Rolling Stone, as I knew him through Hunter S. Thompson, whom the writer notes is not only a late writer, but also the mentor of Johnny Depp. I trusted what the magazine stood for, or what it used to stand for. I wanted Jan to see if he could write, to see if a piece could be written, to put things into perspective. That's all, just to put things in perspective. Now listen to what the writer has to say in response to this. Perspective can be a treacherous thing. It can be hoodwinked. It can be manipulated. Perspective, after all, is inherently subjective. Yet Depp was right to be belligerent. Anyone who didn't know any better would have read the Rolling Stone profile, together with a steadily accumulating digital silo of cuttings and clickbait about the star's life of late, his financial woes, his savage and hostile divorce from American actor A.H., accusations of D.V. that he is challenging in a defamation case in the U.K., and that videotape, and come away with a pretty bleak picture of the 55-year-old. So, now you notice this one portion here, that he is challenging in a defamation case in the U.K. So when he's talking about anything related to A.H., he's challenging the assertions that another place put out, saying that he did all of these terrible things. He's saying, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. Now what this article does is it disproves statements about finances, it disproves statements about other items, and then... Finally, it comes to something about A.H. 
quote, it's not about being a role model. No, it's not at all. The tape that came out, he stops and chuckles and repeats his words. The tape that came out, or the tape that someone made, the miraculously appeared on YouTube, taken from someone's phone, that was not downtown. She, or A.H., wanted to make like it was recent. It was an older video and had to do with uh, finding out that I'd lost hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So it's talking about the TMZ video, as it notes here. The video in question, blurry, clandestine, and we find out too, missing 30 seconds, shows Deb filling a large beaker with red rind and then grabbing A.H.'s phone after seeing she is recording. The video was quote-unquote leaked or released by showbiz gossip channel TMZ, in the States, although compared to A.H.'s other allegations against Depp, the video content seems unexceptionable or certainly the least disturbing. So, they're talking about allegations against him here. You notice that stated in this. He is actually given time for rebuttal. Although the pair have now settled out of court, what A.H. alleges to have happened in April 2016 still reverberates through my meeting with Depp. Now look at this portion here, and you tell me who this is aimed at. A.H. alleged that on Saturday, the 21st of May, Depp attacked his wife and threw an iPhone at her face. A.H. phoned the police, who found, quote-unquote, no evidence of any crime. However, A.H. claims to have taken a selfie later that day showing bruising around her right eye and cheek. The following Wednesday, she filed for divorce. Depp is currently suing the son for alleging in a headline, while since altered rather, that he is a, and you know what they accused him of. So again, who is that aimed at? Is it aimed at A.H. or is it aimed at the son trying to set the record straight? I feel like I have to broach the subject with Depp. Does the actor consider himself a violent man? aggressive man. Can he lose his temper or is he prone to if intoxicated? The thing that has hurt me, the thing that has hurt me is being presented as something that you're really as far away from as you can possibly get, you know. And then it goes into a story talking about the paparazzi. You know, some people have tried to say this is proof of that he's volatile. It's proof of something terrible. But he's saying, basically, he's trying to protect family from paparazzi. I can understand that, too to be honest. And then he goes into his story about A.H. Depp goes quiet again. It seems like he needs to take stock every so often to recharge, to get back into a specific lane or mood every time the conversation veers into talking about the volatile relationship with A.H. and the results of its breakdown. To harm someone you love as a kind of bully? No, it didn't. It couldn't even sound like me. So initially, I just kept my mouth shut you know, I knew it was going to stick on me and it would get weirder. Keep going, you know, go nuts. I ain't going to get into a bleeping contest with someone about it. Spit out what you need to spit out and you know, my attorneys will handle the rest. I never went out and spoke about that bleep. But of course, I care what my family and my kids think. I mean, you realize right away, essentially, that what is being done is the commencement of what they hope is to be your funeral. Now the writer notes something on tone and then this continues. And worse than that, to take away future earnings that are for my kids, you know, I do this blank for my kids, man. How could someone, anyone, come out with something like that against someone when there's no truth to it whatsoever? I'm sure it wasn't easy for my 14-year-old boy to go to school, you know what I mean, with people going, hey, look at this magazine, man, watch, your dad beats up chicks or something. Why do you have to go through that? Why did my daughter have to go through that? Now, the author interjects a little bit of opinion, followed by Depp continuing, why didn't that person speak to the police? I mean, they spoke to the police. The police saw nothing, and they offered her emergency medical technician. She said no. Police see nothing on her. Police see nothing broken in the place. No marks. Then they offer her an EMT to have a look at her. She says no. And I don't know if it was the next day or a couple days later, but then 
then there was a bruise. Then there was a red mark, and there was a brown bruise. So then this continues, talking about the certain place that there's a party, and then Depp continues. She was at a party the next day. Her eye wasn't close. She had her hair over her eye, but you could see the eye wasn't shut. 25 feet away from her, how the bleep am I going to hit her? Which, by the way, is the last thing I would have done. I might look stupid, but I ain't effing stupid. Now, infuriatingly, GQ, they apologize for even covering this. And AH, she utilizes that as the foundation that she could have been damaged. I mean, imagine that. Even bringing up the idea that this stuff, it might not be true. It's dangerous. It's damaging. You shouldn't do that. Quote, as Mr. Heath acknowledges in his article, to suggest that a woman, a man, or anyone might have made up such a serious allegation is a tremendously dangerous and damaging thing to do. If we as a global community are striving for equality and acceptance to run through every part of our lives, through all races, cultures, and genders, then we need to believe those who stand up and claim to have been subjected to Let's just say DV. So, it's damaging and dangerous to question. She should get money because of those things and money because someone defends themselves against said allegations. But standing up and pointing the finger there, oh, that stuff, it's all just free speech. That is literally her defense, too. In this counterclaim, A.H. seeks a judicial declaration that her op-ed is not actionable. It's protected by Virginia's anti-slap statute, a.k.a. this is a First Amendment foundation. She can go out. She can say anything that she wants. But if you defend yourself against said accusations, if you say that this person, they made all of that stuff up, then you, you're not protected by the First Amendment. You should have to pay $100 million. You should actually have to go to jail. That's literally what she wants as well, and so much more. You can see how this is a loser in so many ways. She is not going to have a good time trying to lay all of this out. And when people start asking questions about what he said there, and he actually gets to provide things like, I don't know, photographs, uh, that should be fun too. But anyway, I thought that this was interesting to go over because it shows you the foundation for a case. It shows you what she's trying to say. She's saying he did it first, therefore, and really, did he? Did he indeed? But anyway, I'll leave that up to you. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And as always, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up. You make these endeavors possible. Without you, none of this stuff works. So thank you. I appreciate that. Also, let me mention two things. We have our comic book. Link is in the description. We still need your help getting the word out about it too. So if you'll check that out, definitely appreciate that. And we have our Etsy stuff. You know, you can look that up too. And I appreciate you all so much. Thank you. Let me know what you think about this. And again, thanks.